is they all the highway kind They only come to leave But leaving I don't mind It's a coming that I crave Pour the sun upon the ground Stand to throw a shadow Watch it grow into a night And fill the spinning sky Mike's Music Method. What is up, everybody? I'm bringing you more Towns Van Zandt. We have Highway Kind. If I was one of those super hip YouTubers, I would have like, boom, someone's name would appear, whoever requested it. But I don't remember who requested it. I, I don't write this stuff down. I probably should. But this video goes out to you, whoever you are. You know who you are. Highway Kind by Towns Van Zandt. I'm doing the studio version. He's tuned a hair sharp. It might drive you nuts if you're trying to play along with Towns because he's in E, but not really. He's like slightly enough, slightly, but enough to drive your ear crazy. So you're going to have to find his E. But he's hitting the E at the beginning of the song, so tune to that. And I believe it's all a little sharp. Could be flat, but I think it's all a little sharp. And this is actually a, fa a fan fantastic, a fantastic beginner finger picking tune. It's not hard at all. It teaches you the thumb going back and forth. And the melody is super simple on top. He's just putting some colors in. And it's a slow tempo. But even if you're a more advanced player, there's some cool little tricks. Because he's just breaking a little bit out of that regular box. Giving you an E minor 9 in there. Or E minor add 9, depending how you want to think about it. But there's an F sharp in that E minor that gives that real... Darkness to it. And this is one of these Towns tunes that is just... You don't all you don't really know what he's talking about in some of the lyrics, but by the end of the song, even though you you don't specifically know what he's trying to say, you're just like, oh, devastated. So for this song, you're gonna need besides your guitar, you're gonna need a, like probably a razor blade, <laughs> a hammer, a rope, a stepping stool. I'm sorry, some people are not gonna find that joke funny. But, but, you know, it's humor, right? Humor, we, we get over things with humor. I, I hope, don't be mad at me. I'm just trying to make a joke and be funny and uplift you. Because if you're here to learn this song, you're probably depressed and there's something wrong with you. So I'm trying to break through the mold. I'm, I'm shaking you through the computer screen. Cheer yourself up. Don't learn this song. Don't do it. Stop watching the video. If you're in a great mood, don't watch this video. The song is depressing. Learn a different song. What is wrong with you if you're watching this video? Actually, out of all the songs in the world, you can choose to learn. You've picked this one. Think about that for a moment. What does that tell you about your psychological state? And mine, because I'm, I've spent all this time teaching you this song and learning it. What is wrong with us? But we're diving in, let's do it. Mike's music <laughs> method, duh. Measure one. Now, you have to play all of these measures with a sense of doom in sorrow and sadness, or it just doesn't come across. So let's do it. We have an E minor, but one thing about this song is he's, um, well, you'll see what's happening, but he's not doing a regular voicing because um, he wants to get more dissonance in there to make that minor chord even darker. Uh, so let's play through this first measure here. We're just doing, thumb's just doing six to the fourth string, but we have the fifth fret down on that fourth string. So six, four, six, four. That's all the thumb is doing, and that's a five. I know you could do that six to three, but I'll, the next measure you'll see why we're, why we're holding the fifth fret down. And it's a different tone when you play it there as opposed to open on the third string. So we've got six, four, six, and four, and that and is the second string. So six, fourth, six, second, four. That's it. Let's go straight into the next measure. I think you guys got it. it. Sounds like this. And what's happening there is, well, now, so we've moved down from five on that fourth string to the fourth fret. You can just move your finger or change your finger. It doesn't really matter too much. My thumb's doing the same thing, just six to the fourth string, but now it's the fourth fret on that string. And we have a few more in between notes. So we're doing six, three, four, two. So my fingers there are thumb index on the third, thumb middle on the second. 
get that F sharp against the G, right? That half step. Oof. Oh, it's brutal, right? That excellent dissonance in there. So it's six, three, four, two, six, three with the index again. together. And remember, we're always waiting till the last possible minute to change that fretting hand. Let me give you an even closer look here. Then I'm moving to the four. So it's not at the top of the measure, but when it's when my thumb is actually playing that note. Change. So the tempo. Measure three, we go to a C chord, but it's like a C major seven. You only need to hold down that third fret of the fifth string, that's it, because the second string is gonna be open. So it's kind of like a C major seven. Oh, cleaner. My thumb is doing six, three, that I'm hammering on the fourth string. And I'm hammering the middle finger down, right on the second fret. So it's Five, three, hammer on the four, and then back to three. I didn't do a clean again. That's basically it with one little index finger hit on the second string in between. Thumb, thumb, and, that's a second string, index finger. Thumb, thumb, and hammer, thumb. The strings, five, three, two, four, three. Let's go straight to the next measure, which is E minor, but you only need to hold down the um, second fret on the fourth string. That's all I'm doing. And that's it. It's a six, four, six, one, four. And I'm hitting that first string with my middle finger. You don't have to, you can use your index. And then let's just do the next measure because it's the same idea, but a little quicker. More in between, just just six, one, four, six, one, four. Thumb, middle, thumb. So measure four and five are essentially the same thing. Four is easier. Then measure five and two, three and four. Just a quicker tempo there, a few more notes in there. And if it's not sounding right, it's you like maybe get a razor blade, cut, cut your fingers, a uh, hammer. You can put your hand, I've experimented with this. You can put your hand on the table and just, if you really want, want like more sadness and sorrow, have someone else do it you know, they might be, a, you know, a little more relentless because sometimes it's hard to make you, you hurt yourself. You know, you're going to like hesitate, but just have a friend do it and just right on your fingers. You can do many of the fingers, right hand, left hand, the more fingers that hurt and the more, <laughs> the more blood you see, the more sorrow you're going to be able to pour into these measures to really kind of get across what, what town's got across in the recording. Otherwise you're, you're not going to do it right. Here we go from the top of the song. It's, this intro is just five measures long and then he starts singing. So let's play this whole thing slow from the top. Three, four. Go down to the four, last minute. To the C major seven. To the E minor. And if you're playing that C right, like this, with these two fingers, when you go to the next chord, you you're not you don't have to do anything. Or sorry. Right, you can lift that ring finger up, but that one stays there. So always be aware of like, what fingers you're anchoring. Sometimes when you change a chord, you're doing more work than you have to. So just realize, like, oh, C, all I have to do is, well, you know, or C major seven, all I have to do is lift that one up, and then I'm at the next chord. Less work as opposed to like flipping it how you normally would to get to the E minor. Right, that's just more work and not as fluid and the notes aren't gonna ring as long. So always be aware of that, um, you know, what, what fingers you can anchor. And the less you have to move, the easier it is on yourself. As I said at the beginning, this is not complicated. We already have the intro down. The verse isn't any harder. A few different things, but it, it doesn't really get more complicated or quicker. So let's go through the verse and we're gonna do this together. All right, so we have measure six, and we're doing the same thing. Is that intro? Six, four, six, two, four, with that fifth fret down. 
then the exact same thing here. Yeah, I would probably change the fingers on my left hand. Get a little less, less chance of like that scraping sound, you know? That's the same too, that's C major seven. And then is the next one the same? A little different. So let's talk about measure nine. It is six, four, six, one. And then we lift that middle finger, four, three. So the, the pattern's the same with the thumb, right? It's just thumb, 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 thumb. But it's open there, right? So six, four, six, four is open. But we have six, four, six, one, four, three. I'm exaggerating the lift to show you that's what I'm doing, but of course, you know, lift that finger as, as little as possible when you actually do it. Oops. And you're lifting at the last minute, not too soon. Lift. For you singers, let's sing the last stanza here, because it's the coolest one. Not the coolest, the most depressing, heartbreaking one. You're the only one I want now. Do it slower. Three, four. You're the only one I want now. Never heard your name. Then to measure ten. Ten is going to seem sparse, but this is what's happening in the recording. Recording sounds a, a sounds a bit fuller because there's an upright bass playing with them, but it's pretty slow here. He's just doing a C chord, but he's just playing that fifth string. And he's doing the fourth string and then lifting it open. And that's it. It's just like a little walk. And that's the rhythm. Hold. Then back to the E minor, which is exactly the same. 11 is the same as 9. Where you lift it at the end there, right? I'm trying to break the habit of saying right. I shouldn't even point it out to you because then you're going to notice I say it all the time. But I'm going to point it out to embarrass myself so I stop saying it. And this is what's happening from there. So. It does it again, and then we're on, let me scroll here, 13, same. Uh, it's sparser, I take that back. So it's six, four, six, one, three. So you don't have to lift the finger, that two stays down the whole, same the whole time. Six, four, six, one, three. From measure 10 with the vocals, three. Oh, let's hope we meet someday If we don't, it's all the same One more time Three, four, let's hope we meet someday If we don't, it's all the same <laughs> Sorry, it's heavy handed on that uh, third string I'm kind of growing my nails out unintentionally I have this terrible habit of biting my nails And I'm trying not to do it and now my fingernails are longer than they usually are. So usually I just play with like the skin on my finger. I'm bringing this up because people like wonder all the time, do you use a thumb pick? Do you uh, grow your nails out? If you want to play really well on the classical guitar, you should. But then if you're going to have nails and they're thin like mine and you play an electric or a steel string, you're going to wreck your nails and there's going to be no point in growing them out. So I usually just use the skin on my fingers, but now my nails are kind of long and it's screwing me up. But I'm making up excuses. I messed up. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have played the third string so loudly. I, I didn't hit him with the hammer hard enough. That's the problem. Do it. Do it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> Measure 14, we have a D chord. We have thumb going back and forth. It's a three string pattern, so be careful with it. Four, three, six, or sorry, four, three, five, three. But in between, we're hitting the second string. Four, three, two, five, three, two. That's it. Then measure 15 goes to E minor. You don't even need your left hand. Six, three, two, six, one, three, two. And that thumb is hopping between the six and the three. 
So big stretch, six, three, two, six, one, three, two. And then we go to whatever that is, 13, 14, 15, 16 is a D again, slightly different though. He's getting an extra note at the end, but it's a D chord, uh, four, three, two, five, three is open. So the ending's really, very weird, it's just open on the A and then open on the G string. So open on the fifth and open on the third, that's the ending. But it starts the same as the other D. Four, three, two, open, open. And I should probably hold it down longer. And really I should only be lifting that index finger. You want, you want everything to ring as long as possible. 17, we have this common guitar descending walk. So it's a C major seven. I'm doing five, three, two, and it's thumb, thumb, index. The strings are five, three, two. The second half of the measure, I'm just taking that third fret and I'm going down to the second fret. So it's, I don't know, I'm playing a G chord? No, an E minor, I guess. And then when we move it down, it's five, one, three, two. Thumb, middle, thumb, index. Five, one, three, two. Here's from 14 onward from the D chord, three, four. With the lyrics, uh, I think there's like a pickup from the previous measure. I'll meet the ones, so the word I'll I think is before. I'll meet the ones between us. Yeah, I'll meet the ones between us and be thinking about you. One more time. I'll meet the ones between us. I'll be thinking about you. And the song's almost over. We're almost there. You're doing great. Stay with me. Stay with me. We are on 18. Is exact same D chord. Then this E minor is ever so slightly different in 19 here actually utilize that fourth string. Before he was doing uh, six to three the whole time, but now he does six, three, four, three. Now, is this intentional? This comes up all the time. Probably not. When you, when you can finger pick as well as Towns, he knows what string sets are available, and he's just going with the flow. Sometimes he's gonna hit the four instead of the three, or the six instead of the three. I don't know if that was just him improvising or if it was well thought out for some reason. I doubt it. I'm sure he's played it both ways and is just playing it however he wants to in that moment. And of course, if you listen to live recordings, uh, it's different than this one. So make sure you're listening to the studio one when you're, or you're going to get mad at me and go, hey, Mike, you tabbed it out wrong. Because there's the summer sessions version. There's another live version. There's one later on in his career where he's almost like strumming the chords. Uh, this is, I believe, from, from the studio version. Uh, and now I'm totally lost. Oh, oh yeah, measure 19. So it's six, three, two, four, one, three, two. So instead of six, three, two, six, one, three, two, like it was before, it's six, three, two, four, one, three, two. Put that middle finger down like an E minor chord. Or your ring finger if you wanted to. Uh, right into the next measure, measure 20. Very easy. Just the third fret on the fifth string. Then it's open on the third, open on the fourth, open on the third. And there I wouldn't let the three ring out the whole time because that second half is like a different chord. And then we go to 21, which we've seen before. That's just six, four, six, one, four on that E minor, right? Six, I said right again, four, six, one, three at the very end. So the last two measures, 21, 22, six, four, six, one, four, six, four, six, one, three. And we did it. From 18, let's go all the way to the end from that D in measure 18, three, four. The 
song ends there. So if you're doing the last stanza right on 22, he just hits that first note. But all the other previous verses, he plays through that whole measure before it repeats back to the beginning of the verse. And that's the song. It's one of these that I don't encourage you spend too long on, especially singing, because it's, it's gonna bring down your level of happiness and comfort and joy and peace in life. So change the words maybe if you're gonna play it a whole bunch. Or just do what you want to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm warning you. I'm warning you about the dangers of playing this song too much. All right, but let's do a whole bunch of slow run-throughs. People always request slow run-throughs, and I get it. So we're going to play it really slow. We'll do the whole thing all together. I don't really know these words, um, so I don't know if I'll do a whole run-through with the vocals because I'm going to have to be reading and playing at the same time. But let's just all do a slow run-through together until you really get it under your fingers. Slow run-through from the top. Let's do the whole thing here. One, two, three, four. Verse. Messed up, sorry about that. through it even slower we will do the singing as well let's play from the intro three four sorry three four tab at the same time i have not rehearsed this one a ton as you can tell tabbed it out for you guys the song a day project in september uh if if you if it's not september and you're watching this video you're going to be confused but in 2021 i did a song a day every day in september i wrote a song from scratch but for you watching this live it's uh it not that it's super time consuming but kind of and i have three kids and the and work and the days are busy so I did not rehearse this one, but I want to get it to you all so you can learn a depressing song, share it with your loved ones, but be there to comfort them, okay? Don't play it for them and leave, no matter what. Let's say you're playing the song, you play the last chord, and right, right away you get an important phone call, I gotta I got go to work. Sorry, you gotta ditch work. I don't care how important the phone call is, it doesn't matter, you gotta stay with the, whoever you played the song for, stay with them for a little while, talk to them. They're, they're probably gonna be emotionally vulnerable and sobbing and crying after you play this song. So you have to stick around, it's your duty. Don't play the song unless you're prepared for like a four to 17 hour just sob session with whoever you played the song for. And you're gonna have to walk them through it, put them, lay them on the couch, 
put them on the shrink couch. They're going to have to share a lot of a lot of their feelings. And I'm counting on you to be there for them when that happens, okay? You can't just leave them after you play this song. I'm done. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Later, guys. I'll see you soon. Comment below. Let me know what you liked about the video, what I could do better next time. And, of course, what songs can I do for you next and what um, content or musical concepts or whatever. Later, dudes. Taking you through the computer screen. Cheer yourself up. Don't learn this song.